Well, hello everyone. Sorry for the delay and we have some technical difficulties because for some reason it's not multi-streaming to Facebook as well as YouTube. It's telling me that my Facebook account is no longer connected. I tell you, I love technology when it works. When it doesn't, I have no idea sometimes how to fix it. So if you were hoping to join me on Facebook Live, I'm so sorry, I don't know what happened. Thankfully, this will be recorded and I will upload it to the Facebook channel as soon as we are done. But hopefully there'll be a few gals joining me on the YouTube channel and uh, they'll be able to comment and, uh, and see what we're up to as well, okay? So, so welcome everybody. Today is Thursday, May 6th, first Thursday of the month. And um, yeah, I'm very excited to be here. I'm going to be playing along with the uh, Leave Nothing Behind collection and in particular talking about the Boot Prince Border Punch. So I was really lucky to, um, to, be, to be doing the marketing campaign for the uh, Leave Nothing Behind collection collection. So uh, a couple of you have already mentioned that you saw the collection layout and the first set of borders from the collection uh, on the Creative Memories blog. And that's exciting because, you know, you can follow along. But I have had lots of questions about those first borders. So we're going to make the first border here together in just a minute. But I want to show you the collection. It's, it's a really nice collection, but I know that some of the papers are going to be challenging for some of us. Uh, there's a lot of photographic texture types papers. So I want to give you a few uh, ideas, tips and tricks for that. Okay. There's my friend Linda. Uh, she's found me on YouTube. So that's great. Again, um, sorry about the Facebook issues. Hopefully we'll pull some gals over to the YouTube channel. Linda, if you are able to uh, post a little comment on the uh, the OCM Facebook page just to let people know that streaming isn't working and we'll upload the video later they can come on over and join us on YouTube if they want that would be great but no worries if you can't post that that's not a big deal there's Lorraine she's found us as well hi my dear we we're just talking about how we're having some problems streaming over to Facebook so hi Sandy thanks so much for joining us here as well okay let me um, click you over here I feel like this isn't working at all today. It's just one of those, one of those crazy things, I tell you. I think we're coming in now here. There we go, there we go, okay. So at least we've got our screen set. At least I've got some of my gals joining me here on YouTube and we're gonna play around and have fun, okay? So let's talk uh, Leave Nothing Behind. So as I mentioned, it's a really great collection, absolutely fantastic. If you, um, you know, have visited a lot of the um, national parks, uh, perfect for stuff like that. Uh, of course, we have national parks here in Canada. I know Australia has a lot of national preserves as well. And then there's some, of course, very famous and beautiful national parks in the States. So that really is kind of the impetus of this collection. But as you can see, as I'm flipping through these pages, they're going to be perfect for a lot of outdoor types of layouts, period, no matter if they're in a national park or not. Like, look at that fun little paper there with the little tents and the picnic table and even the little outhouse, the little map. So much fun. So these are going to be great for, you know, summer photos, camping photos, kids camp, you know, when they go off to scout camp, girl guide camp, that kind of thing. Um, isn't that a beautiful paper? Kind of the night sky. I really like that with the little stars there and then the, the map at the back. So the main designer paper collection has a lot of great, you know, just general outdoor papers that I think you're going to find really, really useful. And if you get a chance, if you are not an advisor, you may not get a chance to do this, although maybe I will be doing it with my uh, customers, my personal customers, but um, we created a little project recipe based on you know that idea of the the national parks the grand canyon visiting some amazing places so and you can see the boot print border cartridge uh, border not border cartridge 
border punch there, okay? So great paper pack, and you know what? The colors really remind me of like Wes Anderson. Um, if any of you ever saw Moonrise Kingdom, Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Becky. Hi, Mona, Cheryl, Jana. Thank you so much for finding me over on YouTube. I was just saying a little bit earlier that the streaming to Facebook wasn't working today. It's telling me I don't have an account. So who knows what's going on there? Um, but yeah, so here's, you know, just a, a few little samples of some of the embellishments. I don't have a full sticker sheet uh, anymore, but you can see from these colors, kind of, again, those kind of you know, kind of 50s, 60s colors, um, really uh, sort of retro. And that's what I mean by that sort of Wes Anderson feeling. If you ever watch Moonrise Kingdom, you'll know what I'm talking about. But again, the little badges, you know, for camping, that sort of thing. So, so, so much fun. So let me just clear these off. But I know that many of you will have some challenges with the texture paper pack. Okay, so again, really imaginative papers. Uh, and some of them are, are going to work from a perspective of just being an overall pattern. So this is some pine needles on some boards. Here's some soil with leaves and, you know, grasses and things. Great for natural papers. But this is the type of paper I know that many of you are going to say, I don't know what to do with that. Okay. So here we have an amazing, uh, you know, geyser from say Yellowstone. I'm gonna talk about these two papers in, in just a second. A beautiful vista, that kind of thing. We've got some stone cracks here, like a really extreme close up of stone. Uh, pine needles. This is like an aerial shot of a forest, so kind of an overall green texture. Uh, and then a lot of, um, leaves, um, like a, a house plant leaf. So like a wall of greenery. So that would be a great backdrop. And then you have this sort of really interesting bark texture and then tree rings on the back. So a couple different wood, wood tones there. And then the, here's another one of the photographic papers, absolutely stunning photo itself of the Grand Canyon. I think it's the Grand Canyon but hard to use sometimes. So we're gonna talk about that one in a second. And then the back side of that paper is uh, a, a really interesting sort of marble texture, uh, again, with all of those earthy, earthy colors. Um, and I believe this is an aerial texture of like rock formation, somewhere like Red Rock uh, National Park. So, but again, I know that many of these can be uh, challenging. So before we dive into making that border with the boot prints, I wanna talk about these three papers uh, really quickly first. So when you have papers like this, I always think you either need to match them really well or think about the, the actual scene and then contrast them. So let's take a look here. I have some, my family and I visited Yellowstone a few years back and I've, I've scrapbooked it as well, but I actually had this book of postcards. So here you can see that very much that idea of the, um, the, the geysers. So I pulled some of these out and let's just talk about what you could do when you have these photos. So here we have that lovely sort of vista, you know, the rolling hills, beautiful sunset, um, absolutely gorgeous. You could either sort of match the, the subject of the paper. So here's another, you know, you could use some different photos that were um, of the same kind of scenic landscape, okay? Or what sometimes works a little better is you can contrast them and put some photos there that would be matching but not exact. So, you know, here's some photos. Oh, I really like this one of the of the mama bear and her cubs. So the idea that, you know, in somewhere in that vista, there would be the, this cute little, you know, cub, uh, the mama bear, you know, here's another one that would work. So really just focusing on the background page as a landscape for your photos. So that might work for some of you. These are, I think, five by seven, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, five by seven postcards. So, you know, you could get a couple of smaller photos uh, in there. 
So that's one way to do that. Let's talk about this, um, this geyser one because I do have some photos that would work. So again, here's an example where you might want to try and really sort of match what you've got there, okay? So maybe you trim these down and then just really, you know, emphasize that photograph itself. Uh, you know, maybe something like this, I might trim those down and then put a more solid band of color across the bottom. And then not only do the photos kind of connect, but it reads, um, you get the whole sense of what the, what the layout would be about. Now I know that's not gonna work for everybody, but if you visited Yellowstone and have some of this type of photo with these gorgeous colors, that's one way that you could use a paper like this. All right, and then something like this paper, and I'm gonna keep this one out for another second here too. Something like these papers, again, with the landscape, you can certainly add um, borders to them to, you know, to make them sort of stand out a little bit. So here's what I would suggest. I would suggest that you punch a border. This is the boot prints. We're going to talk about that again. I would suggest that you punch a border from a very similar color scheme. So the boot prints border itself is a negative border punch. So you definitely need something in behind it to, uh, to make it stand out. So I've just got some white cardstock that I would put behind here. And I've punched it out of one of the papers that is very similar in color here. So if I placed it just across the bottom here, it stands out enough to make a difference from the background, but it blends together. If I did something like the green here, uh, you know, it may not it may not sort of blend in as well. That's not bad actually, but so you get the idea that this one would work really well over here because then it just looks like those little boot prints are kind of, you know, going across the landscape off into the distance. And then uh, the color, you know, that kind of rock, rusty red rock color uh, works there. So you can definitely take those photographic background papers and still add to them and then pull, you know, and be very sort of intentional about what you add. So I don't think I have any specifically about, you know, the Grand Canyon here, but if you were going to add your photos in there, you know, you could choose where it would be best, but you wanna see the background paper as much as you wanna see the photograph. The other thing I'll point out is that having a mat around your photos, just a, you know, a really neutral mat will set them apart from the background paper. Um, and then I would really think about tucking the embellishments, keeping them really close to the photos. I don't think you, you'd need a lot here. I don't know, maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe some, just looking through here, I don't know what else you'd have. Maybe, maybe just a little border um, or a little journal box. You know, so that would really emphasize the photographic background while still being able to incorporate the boot print border punch and some photos. OK, so just a couple of ideas there, because I know I get questions all the time about how do you use those challenging photographic papers? Absolutely beautiful photos, absolutely beautiful papers. Many of us will use those ones for, you know, title pages, that kind of thing. But definitely think about a few of those ideas um, when you're considering using them. OK, all right. Now let's get started with our border today. Let me get all these beautiful pictures. Aren't they gorgeous? Sometimes when I'm traveling, I like to get a, a booklet like that, especially when I know that other photographers can take way better pictures than I can. So I like to get those. All right, so this is the little border that um, you might have seen yesterday on the CM blog. I had a lot of fun making this and coming up with this sort of little technique to create what looks again like a much more intricate border than it really is. That's that's kind of my <laughs> that's my whole goal is to make things look good without a ton of work. Um, now I do have a couple of stickers left. I don't have a full sticker pack, but in the 
Uh, when we finish this off, I'm going to add this trailhead border and this leave the road, take the trails, and then a couple of um, leaves, those kind of yellowy leaves, okay? Again, some of these icons and things on the sticker sheets are just so much fun. Okay, so I'm going to leave this at the top here. A couple of things to note about the Boot Prince Border Punch. So as I mentioned, and you can see it here really clearly, it punches very close to the edge. There's absolutely no, um, no part of the paper that falls off. So it punches very close to the edge. So what you can do is you can either cut very close to the boots on this side, I think it's one and a half inches, or you can leave a little bit extra, leave a larger border, and then kind of have an asymmetric look, okay? The other thing is, as I mentioned, it is a negative, um, negative border punch. So you won't see the design until you put something behind it that contrasts with it. So again, on that um, project recipe that I showed you, here you can see that it's got a light paper behind it. Down here, it's got a darker paper and you can't see the, the border image itself as well. So definitely remember to try and contrast what you put behind it, okay? So those are the two things I wanted to make you aware of. Let's go ahead and recreate this border. I've got some measurements here and these measurements are all in the instructions on the CM blog and I will link to that a little bit later. Okay, so these are the three papers we're gonna use. I've got this kind of uh, stylized, it's like a photo, but then it's like a blurry photo or a, you know, a, a photo that's had a filter added to it. So it's got this kind of um, pine needle and then this is the wood on the background, so we're using that. We've got the darker green as a layer and then another uh, strip from this burlap paper, okay? So let's go ahead and cut these out. The first one that we're gonna cut out is two and a quarter inches wide. And that's a, the base for our, um, for our whole border. And I'm just gonna look and see which way I'm gonna cut because when I punch my boot prints border from here, I want the boot prints to go across these wood planks. So I'm gonna cut this way, all right? Now I'm also going to switch out for my decal blade just to give it that little bit of a rustic edge. Um, I like the scallop blade, I like the Victorian blade, but again, this is just to give this a bit of a bit of a rustic feel. So whenever I start something like this, I just take a little sliver off of the edge, okay? So I get that pretty edge, and then I switch it around so that the opposite side of the border will have the same edge, okay? So this is gonna go to two and a quarter, 2.25. There we go, okay? So that's our base. And I want to make sure that I switch up my blade because I don't want to trim the rest of them uh, with the deckle. Not the end of the world if you did, but switching back to the uh, regular blade. All right, the second layer, the green layer, is going to be two inches wide. This is the prints on the back. I'm just going to go ahead and trim that to two inches, pretty straightforward, okay? And that's going to be our second uh, layer. I think that's all we need from this one. And then we want a two inch strip from our third print, which is the burlap, okay? So we're going to set that one aside for now. Now we're going to go ahead and punch the boot prints from this side. Well, you could, you could punch it from either side, doesn't really matter. But this is where we want the boot prints to really show up. So we're gonna cut or punch through the, um, I think this is bamboo. It looks like a wood grain, but it's bamboo, okay? So if you're not familiar with the punches, we start at either one of the little black lines on the front of the punch. You can feed it in this side and start at this line or feed it in this side and start it at this line. I like to go this way. 
Then I hold the paper against the back lip of the punch with my thumb. And then I use this, um, my left hand to pull it across and to do the punching, okay? So sorry if we jiggle a bit here. Now, when we move it out, you're, you're going to want that negative boot punch that you just punched to line up with the boot print image on the base plate. So it, it is a little bit confusing. You're gonna keep moving, keep moving. As long as you see blue, you're not there yet. When the blue changes all to silver and you get a really nice clean um, look there, that's when you know you're at the right spot. Okay, so then you can punch again. Keep moving, I'm seeing blue, I'm seeing blue, I'm seeing blue, still seeing blue. There we go, there's all silver. Punch again, and we just keep going. Because it's such a large design, I think you only punch five times across the whole 12 inch width. Okay, and this one makes a lot of confetti. All of those little pieces, you'll wanna make sure you get out of your punch so that they don't jam it. Okay, so now we're going to, see how you can barely even see that, right? You really need something contrasting in order to see it. We're gonna cut the boot prints to one and a half inches. And then that's all of our pieces. And then I'll show you how we get those great um, diagonals. All right, let me put this away. And then we're going to just start adhering a couple of layers together here. I'm gonna use my repositionable adhesive to adhere the boot prints to our 12 inch by two inch light colored border. So this was the, um, the burlap. Okay, so this is the part that we're going to work on a little bit next. I can just use my regular tape runner adhesive for to adhere the dark green to the decal edge background. Okay, and we'll just set that one aside. Okay, now we gotta get our trimmer out again because now we're going to do some trimming on an angle. So we're going to rely on our 45 degree um, line that's printed on the base. And what we're gonna do is we're going to place the long edge of our border on the, um, the 45 degree line. And then we're going to cut down in between each of the pairs of boots. Okay, so we're going to get three large pieces and then we're gonna have some end pieces that we kind of uh, cut and move around a little bit. So let's go ahead and start right up top here and just kind of eyeball it at first. So again, the long edge is on the 45 degree line and then you're looking to see where the blade is going to cut between this boot and this boot. So the opposite sort of print. Now, this is where all of the little tools that are on our uh, 12 inch trimmer come in really, really handy, okay? So if you didn't know, there are two of these little slidey, clear, see-through alignment guides, and they tuck in at the top and the bottom of your trimmer. Can't get that out when it's not flat. That one's really in there. I obviously haven't used that one a lot. Hang on. There we go. Okay, so you can see that that slides down from the top and this one slides out from the bottom. All right, so when I have it along the line there, then I can use those sight lines, those alignment lines to just double check that when I go between, when I press my blade down, it will go between, okay? So now we have our first little section. We just move it up. We're gonna do the same again between these, these two pairs. Okay, so I'm gonna use that alignment guide. Make sure it's gonna go right between them. Looks good. 
And you know, the, the these little tools, once you start using them, they make you so much more confident with your cuts because you know that it's going to be in the right place. So don't hesitate to get them out, play around with them, and um, you know, have a look and see how they work. Because once you master them, boy, they are game changers. And I don't really think that I used them a lot when I first got my trimmer. I was just so tickled that there was extra blades that, um, you know, were stored in the back and that, you know, it was so smooth and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to leave this last piece whole for now because I think we're going to have to do a little bit of trimming. So really, we've got that border that we've trimmed into these pieces. Now we're going to place them onto our background. All right, and you can see here that I've got them going the opposite way. So here's the trick. The cut edges are going to go at the top and bottom of this border or the sides of the border, whichever way you think about it. So you're just gonna go ahead and kind of place them, place one, you know. This is now going the same way, so I'm gonna turn it around. And then as you start building that, that's what creates that nice stripe effect in between the, uh, the layers, okay? So there's the third. Then I can move them along here until they're, you know, kind of equally distributed. And then these last pieces are going to fit into these spaces. And this is where you have to do a little bit of cutting just with your scissors afterwards. So I'm gonna take the burlap edge and I'm just gonna match it up here. And then once I adhere that, I'll just trim that off. And same thing here. So I'm gonna take the burlap edge, match it there, and then I'm just gonna to have to trim it off there as well, okay? So let's go ahead and adhere these down. And this is what I mean. It's really not difficult to do this. Um, it, you get a great, great look and we can all do it. it. You know, there's no special techniques other than being, you know, kind of careful with your trimmer and knowing, knowing where to trim knowing how to use that 45 degree line and then how to use the sight lines to get your correct spacing. Uh, there we go. Okay. How are we doing for time here? I know I started a, a couple minutes late because of all the tech glitches. Won't be too much longer here. If you can hang in there with me. I'm just going to adjust this just slightly. Okay, so now we're just going to take our scissors. Okay, this one is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to trim off just that little bit so that it's even with the top edge of these ones. Okay, and then on this one, I have just a little bit extra to do. So I'm going to start by trimming it off at the back. And then I'm going to come around and just trim that off at the front. Okay, so that's my base. And then as I mentioned, the stickers, the little cluster is really simple to, to put together. It's this fun little trailhead border sticker. And then we've got the leave the road, take the trails. And you'll notice that I selected these just because you know they really kind of echo some of the um, colors in here. And then from the wildlife sticker pack, I chose to use a couple of these fantastic, I don't know what color you say they are, really pretty green, uh, leaf green sort of, uh, sort of, yeah, leaf green um, leaves. <laughs> For lack of, there's no fancy word, just, they're just leaves. Okay, so maybe just making a little bit of a cluster like this. I can't remember what I did actually in the um, on the the blog post. You can see that a little bit more clearly. I'm going to take one more here and just pop this down here like that. Let's get some foam squares on the back, and then we can add this in. And it's a really fun 
again, diagonal, a little bit different than some other borders that I've done in the past. And, you know, I'm just kind of putting it, you can put it, you know, at the kind of two thirds mark, the half mark, the one third mark, but it's always good to kind of set it off center. So I'd probably put it right about there. Okay. So that is the border, the trailhead border that you'll see in the blog. But I really just wanted to show you that technique of trimming the border layers on the diagonal with that 45 degree line so that you can place them and get that striped effect. And then remember how I mentioned that we were going to punch across this particular paper? So that's what gives it that really nice dynamic tension here because you've got these lines going this way and then you've got the 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 uh, bamboo, sorry, the bamboo uh, strips going that way. So you've got these two diagonals going in different directions and it really gives the eye, you know, some nice movement. So, so I really like that and I really had a lot of fun coming up with some ideas for using that boot prints border punch. Um, as I said, I, I've used most of the stickers and things that they've sent me. Um, I'm going to be doing some of the, I'm going to be using the Leave Nothing Behind collection for the 123 Insider. So I'm just waiting for the, the rest of the embellishments and things to come so that I can choose from a full selection for you. So, but definitely watch the blog over the next little while to see more about the, um, the boot prints border punch as well. There's going to be a selection of borders and cards using the canoe wave chain. And that's a really fun border cartridge, border maker cartridge that you'll want to add as well. Okay. So let me just flip you back over here. Thanks so much for hanging in there with me. I know that uh, we started late, so I'm just going over time a little bit here, but I wanted to just um, kind of point out a couple of things. One of them that I'm really, really excited about and I want you guys to know about is that Lauren uh, Hines from Craft Some Joy and Kylie Kingham from Paper Sweet P and I, of course we do a monthly collaboration called Scrap With Me Times Three, but we wanna make sure that you guys know what we're doing this month because you'll want to go ahead and make sure that you get uh, this Heart to Help paper pack uh, from Creative Memories. We're going to be collaborating and we're going to be doing our own fundraiser uh, in conjunction with our collaboration. So you're not going to want to miss it. We've moved it up a little bit earlier in the month so that our, our fundraiser will have a little bit more time. We're going to do it from May 21st to May 31st. And all the proceeds from the tutorials from this collaboration are going to be uh, donated to the IRC um, as Creative Memories is donating all proceeds from that paper pack to the IRC. And that's of course the International Rescue, I can't remember exactly what it stands for, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't remember the acronym, um, you know, the extended acronym, but that is to go to support um, Ukrainian citizens who have been displaced by the war, uh, help them get the supplies that they need. Uh, it really kind of boots on the ground type of organization that is supporting them. So Creative Memories has already made a substantial donation to the IRC. And with this Heart to Help fundraiser uh, pack with those beautiful blue and yellow, blue and gold colors of the Ukraine, um, all of the proceeds of that paper pack are going to in to be donated to the IRC as well. So I, as a independent Creative Memories advisor, I'm going to be donating all of my profit, my profits, my proceeds from everybody who purchases that pack. But Lauren and Kylie and I will actually be doing an additional fundraiser. All of the proceeds of our tutorials that we offer um, each time we do a collaboration, all of the proceeds from those will also be going uh, to the IRC. So hopefully kind of a double uh, fundraiser on our end. So we're really excited about that. We're thankful for a chance to help and uh, we're gonna be giving you some ideas on uh, embellishing because that's just a paper pack. We know that you're gonna have some ideas or we know that you have some questions as to what can I embellish 
What can I use for embellishments with a paper pack like that? So we're going to give you some ideas. So make sure you join us again, May 21st, 8 o'clock p.m. Central Time. And that's on each of our own uh, YouTube channels. So you can join me on mine at Organized and Creative Mom, Lauren at Craft Some Joy, Kylie at Paper Sweet Pea. Okay. All right. I know that you're also wondering about registration for... Um, Summer Mother Load 2.0, and I mentioned that it will be mid-May, so not this coming Monday, but probably the following, so right after the Great Canadian Scrapbook Carnival. So you'll be able to see that. I'll make sure to, to post it, and then I'll certainly talk about it when we get back together again in two weeks, and we'll probably open registration right around that time as well. Okay, thanks so much. Again, thanks very much to anybody who was looking for me on Facebook and who came over to the YouTube channel, just in case. Uh, I will go ahead and make sure that this uh, recorded video is uploaded to the Facebook page and then it starts the investigation as to why I couldn't stream. But we'll, we'll cross one bridge, as, as one bridge at a time, right? One problem at a time. So thanks again for joining me. Really appreciate you spending some time with me this afternoon. And we'll see you again live in a couple of weeks. And I might be um, actually uh, posting some live videos from the Great Canadian Scrapbook Carnival, which is next weekend. So you might see me pop up and do a couple of little lives then as well. Okay, thanks for joining me, everyone.